Welcome to the Crazy Hack Chemist. So today another video in atomic structure and electron configures configuration. So let's get moving. Bam! Today we're going to be talking about the electron configuration, orbital box diagram, and quantum numbers for iodine. So iodine has a Z or atomic number of 53. You definitely need a periodic table to do every single one of these types of problems. So what I want you to do is I want you to use the noble gas notation and get the electron configuration for iodine. That's up to you. You're going to pause the video and then restart it once you are done with that. So the noble gas that is prior to iodine, we're going to look at our periodic table, is going to be krypton. So krypton is the noble gas in brackets, not parentheses. Then we have a 5s2, 4d10, 5p5. So from that information, we're going to do the orbital box diagram. We're going to do the orbital box diagram using that krypton uh, noble gas notation as well as that core. So here we go. So there's the krypton noble gas notation. You should see that for the 5s, any type of s-type orbital, there's a single box. For a d-type orbital, as in this 4d that's here, you're going to have five boxes. For the p-type orbital, is, as in this 5p, you're going to have three boxes. Okay. Now we're going to place those electrons in these boxes as is appropriate, following the rules of electron, uh, uh, electron placement in atoms. So here we go. We're going to go up and down. We're going to have anti-parallel spins in there. Then we're going to go up, 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 up. And so we have half filled the D sublevel here first. Then after half filling them, then we're going to backfill them and then fill them all up again because we're actually filled up with the 4D10. So they're completely filled. Again, I believe I've mentioned this in a previous video, but I'm going to mention it again just in case. And that is you can, if you want to, do up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and then completely fill in the 4D, knowing fully well that the 4D is completely filled. However, I highly recommend that you do them in the order of filling, and that way you don't miss a step at any point in time. That is up, 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 and then down, 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 down. Okay, so where really meet where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, is in this last one because it's not completely filled, and that's why what you need to do is place the electrons in the order of which they are placed. Okay, so that's an up, that's an up, that's an up, then a down and a down, and so that is the orbital box diagram for iodine. So the question is, is iodine paramagnetic or diamagnetic? Okay, paramagnetism means that you have at least one unpaired electron. Do you? Yes, you do. So this is paramagnetic. Diamagnetic would be adding one more electron and going to the next noble gas, which would be xenon. Xenon would be diamagnetic. All right, so after this, what I want you to do is figure out how many valence electrons are in iodine. Now, you can look at your periodic table and find out what group number it is in. It's 17 or 10 minus that. That would be group 7. So that should tell you that you should have seven valence electrons for iodine. Now, what are valence electrons? Valence electrons are the largest principal quantum number. That's n is the principal quantum number. The largest principal quantum number of s and p type orbitals only. So the largest principal quantum number here that I see is a 5. And I see a 5s and a 5p. Okay, so they are the same largest principal quantum number of s and p type. So we're going to add up all the s and all the p of that same largest principal quantum number. So that would give me seven valence electrons because that's the five plus the two. Okay, hopefully that makes sense for you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle a random electron anywhere in this um, orbital box diagram. And then we're going to do the set of four quantum numbers to represent that particular electron. So I'm going to circle this one right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to pause the video in just a moment. You're going to get an N, an L, an M sub L, and an M sub S of that blue circled electron. So pause that video right now and then restart it once you have done those four quantum numbers for that particular electron. So now the uh, N, L, M sub L, M sub S values of that particular electron. So here we go. 5. It's in a 5p type orbital. So if it's a 5, then that's an n of 5. So the n is a 5 because it's in a 5p. Okay, It's in a p type orbital and the value of L for a p type orbital is a 1. So the L value is 1. 
the m sub l value is the box that it is in, the three-dimensional space, if you will. And so it's in the middle box, therefore it's a zero for the m sub l value. That arrow is facing down, that's facing towards hell, therefore that's negative, so that's a negative m sub s value. Okay, and the number is always one half. So the m sub s value is negative one half. So here's the set of four quantum numbers if you didn't catch that real quickly. Okay, hopefully you get that for iodine. Make sure that you can combine the uh, largest principal quantum number to get those valence electrons, that's critical. Make sure you understand paramagnetism and diamagnetism. It's really simple when you have an orbital box diagram. Again, what you want to do is you want to do the electron configuration first, then the orbital box diagram second. Until you become really familiar, then you can get the orbital box diagram directly from the periodic table. But if you do it this way, you shouldn't run into any problems. Okay, that was another crazy hat video from the crazy hat chemist. And I have a crazy hat because I'm a chemist. Hopefully you can read that right there. I am a chemist. Did I get that right? Yeah, I did. Look at that. Okay, um, so um, I am Mickey Mouse and... A chemist. If you like that video, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd greatly appreciate that. Have a fantastic day and look forward to more cool chemistry videos next time. Bye now.